Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly honored uh, to be here. Today, I am not uh, giving a lecture, but I will be sharing the COVID-19 vaccination journey in Indonesia and its uh, acceptance. It's a subject that holds a great significance in, in public health. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am uh, Dirga Saktirame. After graduating with a degree in vaccinology in 2012 until now, I've been educating people through social media about uh, vaccination. That's Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, YouTube, uh, UNICEF National Campaign, and also various uh, TV programs. This one is with uh, our uh, health uh, minister. So I believe that uh, social uh, media can bridge gaps in knowledge and awareness uh, for people. Uh, so dispel myths and encourage uh, informed uh, decision making. But indeed, uh, social uh, media is a double-edged uh, sword. Since the launch of uh, Google in 1998, followed by a cascade of uh, social media uh, platforms uh, has allowed um, widespread access to information as well as misinformation. So nowadays, vaccination de decisions uh, has been increasingly uh, complex. So vaccine decisions is no longer uh, considered as a simple uh, binary uh, decisions, but rather as a complex uh, multifaceted uh, decisions. And vaccine decisions are subject to many external and internal stimuli. So I'm from uh, Jakarta, uh, Indonesia uh, has the Indonesia is the largest archipelagic uh, country in the world with 70,000 islands. And we are the fourth uh, most populous country in the world. And also we, has, we have the largest uh, 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 Muslim uh, uh, people in the world. So there are fundamental challenges in immunization program. The first one is the geographic dispersion. It's related to infrastructure, cold chain, and also accessibility. The second one is demographic diversity. It's related to vaccine supply and awareness. And the last one is religious and cultural beliefs, especially uh, halal and haram uh, issue in Indonesia. So, a pandemic has massively disrupted our immunization uh, program. And after a uh, pandemic, uh, new data uh, indicates there is a declining confidence in uh, vaccines. Although there are some promising signs that immunization service is uh, rebounding. Okay, how about the public attitudes and expectation towards COVID-19 vaccination in, in Indonesia? We conducted a national survey on September 2020, and then 65% accepted uh, the vaccines, and then 28 were hesitant and 7% uh, uh, refused. And early in uh, 2021, many people were pessimistic about Indonesia's ability to achieve the vaccination target. And given the country's uh, faltering public health management in the early days of the pandemic, many experts doubted that we would be able to vaccinate in tight uh, timeline. However, a year later, those assumptions were proven wrong. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, uh, we started the COVID-19 vaccination program in January uh, 2021, and then we have 13 approved vaccines including uh, Indonesian uh, homegrown vaccines, Indovac and Inovac. And it's free for everyone to uh, primary doses and two booster doses. At the beginning, we achieved high coverage of the first two of vaccine doses, but later there is declining interest in vaccination. Uh, so we have a low booster uh, dose uh, coverage. 
So in Indonesia, uh, COVID vaccines is centrally distributed by Biopharma. It is a state-owned uh, pharmaceutical uh, company. And during a uh, pandemic, we implemented digital transformation of vaccine distribution and monitoring and evaluation system. So according to a uh, national dashboard of Minister of Health uh, COVID-19 vaccination, 86% uh, uh, of uh, Indonesian uh, target population have already received uh, one dose, or meaning that 74% uh, of target population have received uh, two doses, and it equals to 63% of uh, all population, Indonesian population, have received uh, two doses. Up to today, uh, we have uh, administered more than 450 million doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccine. So basically, uh, the government implemented some strategies to deliver these uh, COVID uh, vaccines. First is communication strategies, and then also there's cross-sectoral strategies. Government established a special body to coordinate the COVID-19 management, and also picking up the ball strategies, and then setting up priorities. Okay, in the next slide, I'm trying to capture some moments, some stories that are related to public acceptance of uh, COVID-19 vaccine in Indonesia. Uh, in January uh, 2021, our president became the first person in Indonesia to get Sinovac vaccine. It is something very demonstrative uh, to, to, to tell people that uh, vaccines is safe. And then it was broadcast live in all TV uh, channels, showing the message that vaccine is safe and halal. However, still uh, many people were skeptical. They said that the syringe uh, doesn't contain the vaccines. And then the... Uh, it's not a vaccine, or even the, the, the doctor doesn't inject the needle, blah, 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 okay? Okay, here we go. The first moment is the mandatory vaccination. Is it legal, justified, or effective? Let's see. So, as I told you before, that our uh, policy is mandatory fox vaccination for citizens, as required by law. At the beginning, vaccination rate was low. And you know government has always the way, so they made policies. Dear citizen, if you are not fully vaccinated, you are not allowed to go to shopping malls, to use public transportation, and uh, unable to perform homecoming. It's annual mudik tradition during Idul Fitri. And after this policy is applied, the vaccination uh, rate dramatically speeding up. From this story, we, we can learn that vaccine, vaccination is perceived as an uh, obligation, not for health reason, not for protecting uh, people. The second one, about the perception of Chinese vaccine uh, in this, the case of Sinovac. So Indonesia was the first country outside China to use emergency use approval for Sinovac. And then it is believed that government policy to secure a million doses of Sinovac is the part of successful management of COVID-19. And Indonesia is the biggest user of Sinovac. And the, during the first few months, Sinovac was the only vaccine available in Indonesia. The latter effectiveness was questioned, but we performed local studies. It showed uh, it's still effective to prevent uh, severe cases. But when the, the other vaccines, especially mRNA available, more people adopted it. So we can learn that the public perception uh, about vaccines brain is highly influenced by media, local or international. And there is strong perception that Western vaccines, for example, is better than Chinese vaccine, let's say. Scientifically speaking, as long as the vaccines have undergone clinical trials, 
fulfilling uh, safety and uh, efficacy requirement. So regardless which countries produce them, it is a good vaccine. Right. The third issue is halal haram status of uh, COVID-19 vaccine. So I mentioned before that Indonesia is the world's largest uh, Muslim population country and halal haram issue always causes significant influences on immunization programs. And this one is really one of the main factors contributing to vaccine hesitancy in, in Indonesia. And we have halal law, and it's not only applied to food and drinks, but also in vaccines and pharmaceutical uh, products. The problem is not all COVID-19 vaccines are halal certified. And then the Indonesian Ulama Council uh, stated that in emergency situation, uh, not halal certified vaccines are permissible. Okay, and the government uh, really tried hard uh, making educative persuasion involving religious leaders and, and also scientists. But from the other perspective, for principals, for manufacturers, it is time to consider the situation. When you start to formulating and designing your vaccines, it's better if it's porcine free or if it's animal free, just like mRNA vaccines. So your vaccines uh, can be widely uh, accepted. The next issue is uh, government communication strategies. So during crisis uh, like a pandemic, ideally, we should apply effective uh, communication, uh, active and participatory uh, communication uh, between the government as the uh, policy makers and then expert who voice the medicine and public who voice the life word. Okay. An effective communication strategy is the key of vaccine acceptance. And it should emphasize the importance, risk, and benefit vaccinations. So you cannot, you cannot longer say that vaccine is uh, safe and vaccine is effective, that's all. But you have to tell people that vaccine is safe, it is effective, and later you may experience adverse events following immunization. So it's part of public uh, education. And uh, the government officials tend not uh, doing it. We also have to approach the science-based and fear-based communication. Science-based for uh, fear-based, for example, if you are not vaccinated, you will die uh, of COVID. That's uh, fear-based. Science-based means you have COVID, you have vaccines. Vaccines can protect you and your family. And studies show that uh, vaccines uh, is, is safe. Okay. But sometimes we still use the fear-based approach in particular condition. For example, for educating less educated uh, people. And we have uh, problems. For example, low trust in government and hoax in social media, low literacy and heterogeneous uh, society. And uh, government tried to implement extensive collaborative efforts to combat misinformation as the information. And the channels uh, used uh, were spokesperson, we have special spokesperson uh, on vaccines and then official website and, and also uh, social media. And this is the last one, communication, community collaboration vaccination model in Bali. I'm sure everyone here knows Bali. Uh, so Bali is main tourism destination. At the early days of pandemic, Bali has highest death of uh, uh, COVID, okay? And then uh, a government implemented accelerated vaccination program is a part of integrative approach for Bali Reborn Initiative. The target was 100% in per coverage in poverty area. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the point is to reopening uh, tourism. So what we uh, did is we implemented a village-based uh, vaccination. We involve local community leaders. We really engage them. And then what happened is target successfully surpassed. Interestingly, we used this strategy to other provinces, to other foreign, and it didn't work well. So from here, 
we can learn that uh, different area, different province may require a different strategy, even if it's in the same country. So from my stories, uh, we can learn uh, some lesson. The first one is effective vaccination program requires a robust health system, resilient communities, and effective risk communication strategies. And then remember, this is uh, my message to people. Uh, the best vaccine is the vaccine in your arm. And then vaccine acceptance is influenced by many individual social and structural determinants. Vaccine acceptance is dynamic and evolving issue. And we still have many things uh, to learn. And countering vaccine hesitancy as a major global public health threat requires multifaceted approach that should reflect the local context. Thank you.